Hi guys, welcome to Crafting with Kelly. We are gonna try something new today, um, which is what I seem to always be saying, but we're gonna try something different and we are going to redo a program that was pretty popular at the library from about 1995 to about 2007. Um, it was called Pop-Up Book Workshop. And what we'll be doing is with each video, we'll teach you a pop-up technique. And at the end of all of the techniques that we've learned, we'll put those things together. We'll put the pages together and make a book. Now, um, if you don't wanna make a book, each of these techniques are really good for making birthday cards or Mother's Day cards, or, you know, any kind of card you wanna make. It's a, it's a fun technique to do. So I'm gonna start first by reading one of the books that I wrote, just so that you can have an idea of what it looks like. And I think I will read one of my favorites, which is called The Baby Blues. Now, unfortunately, this is backwards, but <laughs> maybe I can edit this out. The Baby Blues by Kelly Wood. The Baby Blues. And we always put a name of a press, so mine was always K-A-W Press. This one was written in 1999, which was the year my niece was born, which is why it was written. Checkers had a very happy home with everything she wanted, attention, lots of food, a good bed, and a loving person. And if you see it, it says congratulations. But there's a crib over here. Could that be a problem? Until one day, Chris brought home a baby. Her name is Danny, Chris said. You need to take care of her and love her. Checkers tried to love the loud creature who seemed to take up so much of Chris's time. It was hard. She wasn't sure she could do it. Can you see the little baby in the background and Checkers in the foreground? One day, her cousin Jessie came to visit. I want to see the baby, Jessie said. Let's see what happens if I bark at her. Checkers, and this is Jessie. Oops. <laughs> Some of my old books have a little bit of a problem. So Jessie's supposed to run to the door. I have to fix that later. <laughs> Jessie galloped into the room, running past the presents to sniff and bark at the baby. Where is the baby? That's a lot of presents. Oh, but there was Checkers. Checkers got there first. Leave my Danny alone, she yelped. She's mine and I love her. And you can just see the baby in the crib. From then on, Checkers was Danny's biggest defender and they became best friends. And then we always had an about the author. And then we are going to learn the first technique, which is called talking mouse. So for the pop-up classes, you will need some, a few things. Um, the best thing to make the, the books with, if you see, it's a, it's a little book, but it's really, you can still see the pictures, are Oxford index cards. Um, the blank, just get the blank index cards. They're completely white. They're a perfect weight. And so that's the first thing, index cards. You'll need glue. Glue sticks are a little bit better for some things. Um, Rubber cement, if you have rubber cement, is better for other things. We'll go over why later. You need some scissors. You need a pencil and a good eraser. You need a marker that will outline in black. And you need either markers. This is a, a marker set that I really like. So the better your markers are, the better um, your pictures will come out. If you notice, this was my first book. And if you look at the pictures, a lot of the colors have faded. Um, but in the baby blues, they're still pretty vibrant. So the difference was we used, uh, I think, Mr. Sketch with these and the Pentel markers 
um, with the others. It doesn't matter, like just a good quality marker would be good. Um, you can either use markers, you can use colored pencils, or you can use crayons. Um, crayons are a little harder just because if you want to glue something on top of crayons, because of the wax in the crayons, it makes it harder to glue. But they'll work too. And um, that's pretty much it. So we will put a shot of all of these materials. So for the talking mouth, the first thing you're gonna do is take the five by eight index card and fold it in half and get it as close to being even as you can. If you're doing this as a kid, you might wanna have a parent help you. So here we have a folded card. The first thing you're gonna do is fold it into a tent like so. You're gonna take your scissors and you're going to make a cut on the fold. It can be any size cut, any angle. So now you have a cut. The next step is to fold that cut. I'm hoping that this will show. Um, at an angle, you don't wanna go off the page. You're gonna fold both sides so that it looks like a little collar or something. Then you're gonna fold them the other way. And this is where, if you have a ruler, it could come in handy. You could use the scissors to just make sure it's a nice crisp fold. And you're gonna turn it back up into a tent. I'll put this towards you. And you'll see that that's... And then with your thumbs together, you kind of push it in so that it bumps in. You might have to try it a little bit. That's why the better your fold is, the better it works. Hold it again, so now it looks like you just have a V in your thing, in your card. And then you have a talking mouth. Now, that doesn't do much by itself, does it? So let me show you a few talking mouths that we have made over the years. So now that you have your card, and you have a talking mouth, let's see what we could make out of this. What does that look like to you? To me, they always look like a frog at first. And we have a few frogs. So here's one with a wide talking mouth. And this is the talking mouth, and somebody just drew the frog around it. Here's another talking mouth that was a bug. This one hasn't been quite finished, but as you can see, the talking mouth is right there and they drew the bug around it and then some wings. I think that's a frog's tongue coming for it. Here's a talking mouth where somebody got creative and they made a tiger and then they added some teeth, which is something that you could do. But see, there's the talking mouth and then they just drew around it. Here's somebody made, let's see. I'm using some of the kids' ones that I still have. <laughs> Here's a frog that's a talking mouth. This one's a princess frog, or a prince, I guess. And as you can see, it's a frog. I'm gonna use a few of these. I just grabbed a handful. Um, let's see. Here's another one with some teeth. Someone made a shark. Woo! And you can tell that some of them are wide, some of them are narrow. Here's another frog. These are both wide, but mine's a little bit narrower than that. So you could always try different techniques and see which one, like here's a really small one. And that one was turned into a chick or some kind of a bird, but it's still a talking mouth. So I have a whole pile of talking mouths and everything looks a little bit different because if you're an artist, your things will not look exactly the same. So if you do a frog, it will be different from everybody else's frogs. If you do, uh, I don't know, a turtle or a lion or a shark, your lion or shark or turtle will be very different from other people's. Here's another bird, which doesn't look like the first bird, but it's similar. This one's a wider mouth. And here's another one with a different bird. So what you need to do is take your talking mouth and 
and take a pencil and start drawing. Well, let's do a couple more talking mouths just as an illustration though, because I said we could do double ones. So if you cut this, let's do one really wide one and one sort of shallow one. And then we'll fold it up. Fold this one up. So we've got two little collars and we'll fold them the other way. the tent. Get them flat again. Turn the card into a tent and use your thumbs. This one will be trickier because you have to do it twice. So you might have to use your index fingers a little bit too. <laughs> this one. And see we have two talking mouths. So that could be two birds or two frogs. So let's do a really quick sketch with the first one that we did. So I'm just going to make a frog. next step is after you're happy with your picture but it's just a frog right so to make a frog it look more interesting there's the frog we need a little bit more detail so let's see where would a frog be sitting maybe on a lily pad or in a bird bath or it could be a lot of different places let's see i like the bird bath idea so let's see i'm gonna have this frog kind of coming out of a bird bath. And we need some background. Let's see, there's the ground. We'll do some bushes over here. Maybe there's the part of a house. some clouds in the sky. Maybe there's a tree over here. And so see, that makes a lot more of a, a, makes a more interesting picture. Maybe let's see, we'll have a butterfly flying by. Because the other thing you wanna think about is if this is the first page of your book, and it doesn't necessarily have to be, but while you're drawing, you need to think of the story. And it's always kind of good to start with the talking mouths because then you have a character. And to write a story, you need a good idea and you need a character. Now, this is very unfinished right now, but you have to be happy with your picture, um, pretty much. So you can always, if you draw very lightly, the eraser is great because then if you um, want to, you can erase the pencil marks once you're sure that you like the darker mark. So this is where you need the black marker. Once you're happy with your picture and um, you haven't made any mistakes that you're thinking, um, you can just take your black marker and you're going to put it right over the pencil lines. And this is why you want to make sure that you like the pencil lines. And the nice thing about this is that there are no mistakes because it's your creative idea and your creative license. So, and it doesn't quite, it doesn't really have to go right over the pencil lines. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. But you should actually make sure that you draw lightly when you're drawing the pencil marks because that will make it that much easier to go over 
what you've done. Now I'm just going to show you I've just done the frog, sticking his head out of the third bath. So see how much clearer that looks? And you can still see the pencil lines for his, like his leg down here, but that's where the eraser comes in handy. So just very lightly, if your, light, if your marks were light, you can go over and erase the pencil lines. So, where I had all of those lines, and I, I didn't erase completely, but where I had the, the leg was slightly different, now you can't even tell that. So I'm going to just do the rest of it. And I'm not even following the lines for the, the clouds. I just knew that I wanted clouds in the background. And the same with the tree. So it's just, it was the idea of a tree. And you know what? I don't really like where that butterfly is. So I'm going to erase it completely and put it somewhere else. Excuse my shaking table. I'm gonna erase all of the lines. And although this is a, a pretty good eraser, it's one of the pink, or pink pencil erasers, the gum erasers actually are really nice because they erase without any, leaving any marks behind. Plus this pencil eraser is probably dates too. <laughs> 1990 or 1999 and it's a little old so it's leaving probably more marks than I would have liked. So there we go a frog in a bird bath with some background and let me see maybe I'll just draw the butterfly down here and I'm going to be brave and do it with no pencil <laughs> but you don't have to do that okay so there we go now I'm going to let you think about it and we'll color that and come back to it here we have two talking mouths on top of each other so the one thing you could do with a talking mouth is bump one side in. So now it's actually like a triangle instead of a full talking mouth. And you could just do it that way too if you wanted to when you take your card and fold it. do kind of a wide one and I'm only going to fold one side let's see what that looks like so it looks like this when you have it put in but when you're looking at it it looks like this so it could be what could it be hmm still looks pretty much like a mouth doesn't it let's try a different one what if we do the talking mouth at an angle? Now remember, you always have to cut where the fold is because that's the only way it's gonna work. So let's do this talking mouth at kind of an angle. So see, I did it kind of an angle. Now you really can't fold this side because it doesn't have anywhere to go, but you could fold this one and you could make it a pretty deep fold. So we'll do one side, then the other, put it into a tent. If it comes apart, put it towards you and we're gonna bump that side out. Now this one looks completely different, doesn't it? It could be a big nose. It could be an umbrella. It could be, I don't know, what do you think it looks like? If you turn it upside down this way, it could be a basket. It could be a lot of different things. Let me show you some examples I have of a talking mouth 
that isn't a talking mouth. So here's one that only has, you can see it only has one side. And somebody made it into an octopus with fangs. <laughs> I think that's an octopus. It's got eight, well, it's got six legs. Maybe it's a spider. Who knows? Here we go. Here's one that was cut just like that, like this one, only a, a lot wider. And it was made into a basket. And then somebody glued flowers in for Mother's Day. This would be a perfect Mother's Day card. Don't you think your mom would be happy <laughs> to get something like that? It's a great birthday card too. Here's a different one, another Mother's Day card. And here's the one talking mouth that side, that's just one side and somebody made a kangaroo. And in the pocket, and in the pocket, they put a little kangaroo. Oh, this was a Valentine's Day card. So that's a fun one. Um, so you really can do a lot of different things with talking mouths. They don't have to be mouths. Let's see. Oh, I remember I, there was an umbrella somewhere. So here's one that is a talking mouth, but it's actually an umbrella. And the, the handle's glued in. Um, let's see, that just has a talking mouth. Okay, so you have some idea. Here's another talking mouth, just a regular mouth. So we could do something with this one. Um, let's see, maybe I'll just do the flower basket because that's kind of a neat idea. And we'll put a big handle on it. Oh, oh, actually, when I did that, kind of looks like a weird looking duck, doesn't it? <laughs> or a heron or something, except the mount, the beak is going the wrong direction. So we're gonna make it a basket. And that's the thing, sometimes you start out with one intention and you end up completely different. So I'm gonna let you color and come up with, I'll, I'll I'll finish my frog and my basket, and then we'll come back and talk about how to finish your card. Or even if it's part of the book, you have to finish it. So there's a technique for finishing. So go color, do your best, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. So hopefully you have a page, or even two if you like, that is finished. Um, so we are going to show you how to fix, fix it so you don't have a big hole in your card. Because if you gave somebody a card or if you did a book that looked like this, it looks unfinished. So what you need to do is take another card. That's why you need to buy a lot of index cards. And we're going to fold it in half, just like you did the first one. And so you have a blank card folded in half. Now take your finished picture and put it on top. Now what do you notice? It does look finished when you do this, but the inside of the frog's mouth is pretty boring. So what you can do is take a pencil and kind of lightly, here I'll try to do it this way, lightly draw inside where the mouth is on both sides. And then when you take them apart, you have a very light, very good to see there, but here, I'll show you, I'll just do it darker. This is where my frog's mouth is. So you're just gonna take a marker or something and color the inside of the mouth. So I'm gonna cheat and use a big marker. These probably will fade a little bit more, but it will be on the inside, so it's not that bad. Ooh, wow, plus it a very different color from what I expected. So I'm just going to give my frog a pink inside. So you don't have to keep in with the lines. You don't have to keep the lines because once you put the book together, it's just going to look like that. So see, he has a, a pink mouth when you open it. Now, how to put these together. What you're going to do, <laughs> sorry, is Again, draw a line around about where your frog is, where you've colored your mouth. I'm going to just do this one a little bit darker just so you can see. So if you look, I've drawn there. And this is where rubber cement comes in because it is the best thing for, for putting 
cards together, for paper together. So you wanna get as much of the glue off as you can because you are doing a very, very light coating. And try to go from one side to the other and go not where you drew the line. So you don't want to go inside this part where, you, where your mouth is. And again, a very, very light coat. Please ignore the dog sneezing. Okay, so we have a very light coat here. And we're going to do the same thing on the card. And again, you don't want to go pretty much here to here to here. So you want to stay away from the mouth. I'll draw a darker line. So this is where the mouth folds and you're going to stay pretty much away from that. So you're going to put a little bit more. Get the less, the least amount of glue, of rubber cement you can put on the better because the magic thing about rubber cement is that the drier it is, the better it sticks. And in fact, it has held most of these books together for 20 years. Need a little bit more. Make sure you go to the edges. If you're working on a different surface, you might want to put something under it so you can go right to the edge of the paper. Then we're gonna flap them a little bit. So they're pretty dry. And then you're just going to make sure that the folds line up and that it's the right direction. <laughs> and you're going to press it. And the nice thing also about rubber cement is that if it doesn't stick quite the first time, you can pull it apart and stick it better. <laughs> now I didn't put quite enough in that corner. I think I was I was paying more attention to the dog than I was. Yeah. Okay. He's barking. He's barking at birds. Bandit, come here. Come here. Never mind. So you have rubber cemented this together and should go to the edges and there you have the first page of your book. Now the easiest thing to do is if you're going to do this as a card, now you can write happy birthday mom, happy mother's day, happy father's day and make it into a card that it will open and you could have a bird bath with a frog in it. Um, or if it's part of your book, what I always like to do with the classes we have at the library, and here's somebody's old folder, just keep them all in one place so that you know. Another thing, <laughs> sorry, another thing that's good to do is if, like say you get your frog character and you're going to have him throughout the book, you might wanna write down what color markers you used. And the nice thing about the Pentel markers is that they have a number. So you could either write it on the outside of the folder or if you're, Sure, you're going to make this into a um, book. You could just write very lightly. This one is number 111. So that's the frog's mouth and eyes. Or no, that's this body. And then this one is 134. Um, So that way, when you go back to color and you want to make this frog go from one place to the other, you remember what marker colors you used. So we are going to put that all together and save it for next week. Now we're going to do one more thing with the basket because this one really isn't finished. However, um, I can finish it and have it ready for next week. Um, but if we want to put flowers in there, we want to make some flowers. So, my dog is about to bandit. So, we want to put some flowers in that basket. So, um, the first thing we need to remember is that it's going to be folded. So, it has to come out of this spot. 
So you might want to kind of make an, have an idea of how big that spot is. So I just folded an index card. And this will take some trial and error. Um, I'm just going to, I'm going to make some kind of generic flowers. So I'm going to put some for one side and some for the other. So here are my flowers. Um, I'm going to actually color them quickly. Here's some very quick flowers. We're just going to cut them out. And whatever you want to be showing, make sure that you have some extra because you need something to glue on. So I'll show you what I mean. So here's the stems. Here's the flower with some stems. So here I have two sets of flowers and we just are going to put, this is where the glue stick comes a little bit more in handy, except the glue stick completely glued shut. Glue stick's not working. We're going to use a little rubber cement. A glue stick would actually work better with this. So I'm not going to even pull that out. Now, because the flowers are going to be showing on this side of the card, we need to put a little bit of glue at the bottom of the flowers. And then you're going to just Stick them out of the basket. And we'll do that with this one too. Like I said, glue stick for this is better just because it's a little bit easier. And so see, now I have two bunches of flowers in the basket. And we will do the same thing with this one that we did with the other, which is fold your card in half and we're going to put it right behind this one so that when you open the card, you don't see there's a black, I mean, you don't see a blank spot there. So I will finish these and next week I'll show you how it turned out. And that is the end of Talking Mouse and our, the end of our first video lesson. So I hope to see you next time. Um, a short one. Okay, so before we end, let's do one more story and you can see if you can pick out the talking mouth. So this one is called Something Very Strange. Something Very Strange by Kelly Wood. And this one was written in 2000. And here's the first one, the talking mouth. And what is that? It's a bat. Something very strange is going on around here tonight. In the pumpkin patch, the pumpkins are growing faces. And this is actually next week's technique. Flaps. Creatures in strange clothes wander the streets. Can you guess what day this is? Oh, this one has two talking mouths. Deserted houses are bustling with activity and noise. Old owl, do you know why? And here's another talking mouth. This one is a talking mouth that, see if you look at, it was a big talking mouth, but then the tip was bumped in to make it look more like a, an owl's beak. Do you know why? It's Halloween. The end. And that's the end of our first lesson. I will see you back for the next one. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And uh, like I said, next week we'll be doing flaps and I will see you then.